Hello, mortgage coach. So Scott Nicholson. So I, um, I have, let me get, um, let me get settled in here. So, uh, like I said last night, Todd and Dave threw me the keys to the mortgage coach car and says, all right, you know, Hey, take care of the baby while we're up with Mr. Forcier on an on-site visit with some, uh, students, uh, disciples. So, uh, we get to have some fun. So one of the things, oh, and actually I have Mark Matson with me. So Mark, good morning. How are you? Hey, good morning, Scott. Morning, Marge coach. Um, so I brought Mark along cause, um, we were both enthralled and I know Mark recently just went to amplify with Renee. Um, first things first, you have to watch what they did last. I think it was, was it last week already? Was it last week? Um, there they are talking. Let me find that video. Um, uh, shoot, where are you? What's your rates? Um, where are you? Uh, oh, either way. I think it's incredible that you watch that because I think there's a lot to it and it's just going to get worse and worse as we move forward. Um, so I think in the, the couple takeaways, Mark, what were some of your takeaways watching that, knowing that you've been to Amplify already with Renee and with some of those people, what were some of your takeaways um, from, from yes, last week's video? Well, first of all, thank you, Scott. I loved last week's uh, video on what's your rate. It's one of those questions that we get stumped as lenders, primarily because uh, we live in such a reactionary world. You need a quick application, you need to adjust rates, uh, uh, lock, lock these people. Um, so it makes sense that we would also get stuck wanting to deliver immediately an answer to somebody else's question when we haven't had a chance to reframe it. And having gone through Amplify, and everybody needs to definitely look at, at that Amplify experience, one of my biggest takeaways from that was to ask different questions and to ask the questions differently. I don't have to respond immediately with an answer to their specific question. It's better to pause, think about everything in full context, and get a better idea of what they are actually asking. So in watching that video last week with what is your rate, uh, the panelists did an amazing job, so smooth. Everything looked very well, uh, just scientific and an art form to it. And all they did was add humanity to this industry that is being commoditized by robots. They asked human questions. How can I help you? Because I care more about your entire scenario than this particular interest rate. So asking the questions is the one thing that I took away from that. And that's why I'm so excited about going into it this week because right. you and I have been working with listing agents for 15 years. I've been working with listing agents. I built my first website for an agent in 2002 as a lender and agents get asked the same question, except it is, what's your rate? What's your price? What's your commission? So we can apply the questions from last week to this week's, and keep on with this trend. So I'm excited about today. Yeah, and that, and that was it right there. So I was gonna pause it, that's exactly it. So Mark and I, I, I go, hey Mark, do you wanna come in with me? Because, um, that, because last week was so powerful and that's related to us as lenders in our industry when the consumer's asking the, that difficult question and the responses, which I wanna come back to the second and framing this, this today up, we wanted to take the same theme we wanted to change the question to what's your price that's directed to agents. And this is what the agents question, the question the agents are all getting from their consumers or their seller or their buyer. And that really what that means is what's your commission? You know, what are you going to do for me? Because I got this, you know, I've got an I buyer offer in now and it's pretty seamless and I can do this. So there's a lot, a lot of uh, friction in that side of the fence. So I wanted to take that conversation and then enable the loan officer today on this call to take what we're going to give you so you can help them answer that question. That's our goal today. And so now going back to last week, um, I watched it and there's some massive takeaways. I mean, shoot, every single person on that call is just, a, I mean, come on, they're very polished. They're very good. Uh, it was very impressive, almost to where I almost had like three or four wows, like, wow, that was incredible. Those are, think of that, it's almost very intimidating too. Think of that's your competitor in the market. So 
that should encourage you to sharpen your, you know, your saw, so to speak, as you're going out there, because it's going to get more difficult if you're going against the Joshes and the Jeremy's of the world and everyone on that call. But also it's encouraging to say, guys, these guys are just giving us the recipe and what they're going to talk about. And I, and I think a couple of the ahas I had, which I love because I, I relate to a person, I think it was, was it Tony? It was Tony. He was the regional, um, it was right before Ryan. And so, and Tony was spot on in my eyes because I use the rate watch um, understand your market. So I listen to Dan Raw, which, you know, I listen to Dan every day. I, I watch the markets. I'll look at Bloomberg. I'll get my media sources or wherever they're at. I look at it. I listen to Dan. I make my decisions so I know what's going on in the market. I can educate the consumer what drives the market, not the feds, not your bank, not your manager, what drives them. Because what happens is every time I get that rate call, almost every time I go up like, and here's some things to think about because, and I explain how the market moves. Then I go, imagine you call me on a Wednesday and we had a poor data release in the morning and rates got better. And you happen to call, I get that first call when rates are good. And I say, you know, I walk through it, I figure it all out. And ultimately you just want before you hang up was what is it? And we figure it all out. Then I go, well, think about this as you spend the next three or four days shopping around, kicking tires, and we get a, a good data release the very next morning, let's say like a jobs report, and I'm saying if you're looking at the graph I sent you, look how much movement that is. So really it's not about the rate each one has, and if I go low and someone goes high, and you go, well, you're too high, than, you're higher than Scott, I'm gonna come back to you and I say, well, the market moved. So it's more about let's build figure out your why, let's build that, let's get prepared, and let's study the market together. I text probably 10, 10 times a morning, these screenshots go out. All my pre-quals, all the people that you know, are getting ready, I update the market, because what happens is I prof kind of professionally confuse them. Now, rate goes out of the question. It's more like, Scott, you tell me when to lock. You know, so I think Tony was really spot on uh, in talking about limiting the P's and all that stuff. What were you going to say, Mark? Let, me, uh, let me comment on that. I didn't mean to cut you off there. Um, I think you brought up something really important. You absolutely love mortgage rates and the way the market moves. Like you geek out about this stuff. You watch the markets all day long. You talk in these, this language that is outside of the typical real estate agent, loan officer, or consumer, and you love that. So... I know you love the what is your rate question because you can spend an hour just telling them about the market and the new upcoming uh, economic releases using those tools like the, uh, the, the widgets and then taking those screenshots is a great way to reframe uh, the question from them and show your value. The point I wanted to make here is you love that question because you can apply it to something that you absolutely love talking about. And the way that you have taken that was your rate question where it could be um, a competitive type thing. You just apply it to an area. So what I took away from that was uh, to use, you know, whatever these questions are that scare you. And as Renee said last week on the call, connect with something internally, something emotionally first where it's true and connect that to your truth you love numbers and that's where you can redirect that on the, what is your price? How do we help a real estate agent with what is your price, which can mean a number of things it can also mean what is your commission? So as we review last week, so let's keep thinking on terms of going forward. How do we apply those strategies to the, what is your price? What is your commission? So you like that widget and you can apply it to, just your market knowledge because you love talking about that. You don't even have to reframe questions. You just start talking and they're like, okay, good. Just lock it when you think it's good, Scott. And, and you what were some of your other takeaways? I mean, yeah, you can, you, can, you can literally fake it. Just listen to Dan, right? Just log in, listen oh, yeah. to Dan. He gets, he's there, shoot, he's been doing this for 10 straight years. Um, doing, you know, so he's there every morning for you. So log in, listen to him, figure out where it's going. And then, you know, and then you you know, use that professionally. So where they, you may not be like a scale of one to 10, like off the chart trader, you know, 10, 
you could be a one or a two and kind of fake it, you know, like, okay, I'm going to, you know, try to get this in there and like, you know, get it to where I get it. And then, so you've won that transaction based on your professionalism and, and saying it's not about rate. It's actually about structuring it correctly. Like you heard last week, you know, bigger picture, but also timing the right market, which Tony said, that's exactly right. And that's what I do a lot. So let's pivot on. Let's now, this is, now let me, let me preface this up a little bit. I, I get a little bit of feedback on like, man, you talk about, Scott, some of your problems you have when you talk to people is you talk too high level, right? And, 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 and I get that. And that was one of the things back in the day when we all sat with Roberto Monaco, he taught us to, to almost like a ladder type analogy is, is you move down the, uh, the intellectual capital of your consumer or up. So you have to be good at understanding where that consumer is and speak to that. But I'm speaking to you guys today as bankers, as brokers and bankers, you guys on your business card says it's finance and you deal with finance. So I'm gonna go tough love on you because last week's call was about as good as you get that's the elite level, and I'm not gonna come in here and sugarcoat you guys and just log the gag and handhold you guys. You guys need to up your games because if you look at your pipelines right now and subtract all of the easy cherry-picked rate and term refis, what does your business look like? I promise you most of us, and I'll be in there too, I got too many refis right now, is most of us are gonna struggle. So you have to pay attention you have to be that professional in finance. Listen to all the darn videos in YouTube. Google me, Google whomever talks about the finance and be the expert. You have to because not only will the refi market drop up, dry up number one, number two is the competition is getting fiercer and fiercer. Look at the numbers that Zillow reported yesterday, right? So not only are they attacking our agents and what, you know, in their livelihoods, they're attacking us because they're now want to have all the services included for it. So you have to be that expert and think of what two years is going to look like. Are you going to be around? Did you take the time today to get the due diligence and your homework and your practicing, your scripting and just having the confidence? And one last thing about that group last week, if you notice, their confidence on in themselves is off the charts they know they can go in front of any person any group any professional and just dominate that conversation right with confidence and that's where a lot of people have to get out and just i'm not don't be afraid and, and get out there and be that professional so with that said let's jump into it so what is your price right this is here's josh speaking now I'm kind of ADD in right now. Let me pause, Josh. Um, what is? Hey, Scott, share my screen because I've got okay. the what is your price up. Perfect. And while so, you're sharing that, I, I think, want to make one quick uh, comment on the. Uh, you you can actually go ahead and request to share. Okay. You see it? You got it. Mark. Yeah, it's not sharing. Oh. What are you doing? The reason why the confidence level is so high, if you look at the numbers just in closings of the panel that they had last week, but look at the number of TCAs that were done yep. by most of them. So they've had a chance to practice the scripting over and over. What I love about the mortgage coach, the TCA, the, the most important thing that I love about it is the video. It's an opportunity to speak with somebody and connect with them on a human level. Yes, I've got all of these numbers. I've got four columns. I'm going to show you how to save money, make the best deal for your, yourself and for your financial scenario. But here's the person you're going to be working with. And this is how we beat the bot. This is how we connect on that human level, take ourselves out of the, uh, uh, the rate uh, challenge game. Because once we start talking price and rate, we lose. Mm -hmm. That's yep. not a place where we want to be. We want to be on service and asking better questions. So more practice on those videos. I see a lot of people using the TCAs without doing the video. The video is what's going to help the most because you can watch yourself. And that's what we learned at, at Amplify. And I would just say those videos right there, I'm going to go ahead and show, share my screen while you yep. 
So think of now we're going to pivot now. So watch last week's last, watch last week's episode. That is incredible. You know, um, from a manager's perspective, from an LO's perspective, you have to have that skill set. And then now, so our goal today, what I'm going to give you is a skill set of tools and strategies that you can go help your purchase money uh, referrals, help them deal with those difficult questions they're getting asked today, right? So does that make sense? So go ahead, Mark. My theme for today is to ask different questions and then to ask those questions differently. So if we're gonna be working with our real estate agents, buyer's agents or listing agents, ask them what their price is and ask them what their response is. So I made a couple of phone calls this morning to some of my top agents and you know, how do you rebuttal this? Do you have a rebuttal? What is your value? Do you have answers? Do you redirect? Basically, taking back from what we listened to last week on how the rate question. So I would encourage everybody, and if you want to do it during this call and post it on the live on our Facebook feed, that'd be awesome because I would love to make this more interactive. Pick one of your, or two of your agents and say, look, just text them on Facebook. Market is changing. Still is posting new numbers. How are you answering the question about your commission? Or how are you answering the question about the price of properties. I need to know so that I can set you up properly when I'm referring you clients that are in the move up process or in the selling process. I need to know kind of what you think you want to, to say and just ask them these questions and ask them again. Uh, that would be the first thing that I would do before assuming we know what their fears are and assuming we know what the right answer is to their questions. Sorry, I was muted. So I said, let's role play for a second. So now let's dive. So now I'm going to get you the nitty gritty now. So let's dive in. And let me, before I dive in, I'll tell you the tools I use. So every single day when I get up, I put on, literally put on my tool belt. First thing is my rate watch, right? Got to have my rate watch app, right? So rate watch, market, all my clients uh, that are in process, that haven't locked, that are you're figuring out our TBD, so I'm always constantly monitoring the market for them. Number two, I always have my uh, my mortgage coach. This is my lifeblood. This is my and one thing comment and one thing blown away last week. I was like astounded at how many TCAs Jeremy has done. I think it's 5,400. I thought I did a lot. I was at 16 or something, 1,600 or yes, 1,650. This is your, I mean, this is your livelihood. This is where all the magic happens from everything. I build everything in here from just normal presentations to seller buy down presentations to my rent versus own. I live in here. I would be out of business if this went away. I'd be done. I would have to figure something out. So that's my, that's number two. Number three, I live and breathe and you're probably thinking what I live and breathe seller buy down and let me explain for something I get this question a lot we mean seller buy down rates are great well I don't use seller buy down just to take rate from you know three seven to three and an eighth or three and three eighths I actually use the seller buy down for my move up buyer I use it for my first home home buyer for affordability I use it to my non QM buyer to get them out of that six and a quarter. I'm gonna show you examples of live people. I'm gonna, I use it for when last week or two weeks ago, B of A, I was steered, I was referred into a client that was done. He was in, in B of A going in to write an offer. The agent brought me in because he doesn't like the experiences dealing with big block banks. And I'll show you how I took that away and use the seller buy down to help and achieve one of his goals. So I use this in multiple levels, single premium buy out of MI. I use it a ton in today's market. And just imagine the seller buy down when rates tick up a quarter. Remember back in the holidays of 18, fall, late fall, early winter of 18? I mean, the market shut down. So I use this very, very extensively. And this is a major tool on helping your agent provide value. Um, that's a huge deal. So let me show you a couple examples. So 
what, let's say I just met Mark. Mark's gonna be an agent I wanna target. And one of the immediate benefits um, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna give to Mark is, can you see me, Mark? Can you hear me? Oh, you know what? Um, let me share my screen. Am I sharing my screen? No. Yeah. Pop over, can you pop me over the screen? Hand me the wheel. There we go. Thanks, sir. Okay. So what I did was, I basically told you the tools of my mortgage coach, you know, getting into my mortgage coach. I live and breathe in this thing. I live in the seller buy on. I live and breathe in this thing, even in low rate environments. And now Mark and I are going to get into it now as far as dialogue. And now I'm the loan officer that's enabled with my strategies. Now I'm going to go help Mark. So let's say, Mark, one of the things I can help you with in today's markets, or let me, let me bring it back, Mark. What are some of the, the struggles you're dealing with um, going after new listings or your clients today? If, if Mark is a, a listing agent, for example. Let me, uh, I love that question. And yes, I've been in lending 20 years, started as an originator in 99. But I was 22 years old when I started, and I remember how afraid I was to speak with agents or buyers or sellers. At 22, I had very little value to offer of what I thought. So I spent the first two years putting up open house signs, working in real estate agents' offices, cleaning desks, taking out trash, basically learning everything on that side so that I could figure out where I could fit in and start helping. And I slowly started to build websites, do some marketing, and find that value. So I... I've technically been on the real estate listing side for 20 years. And I love these questions and I love working with the listing agent. Um, so uh, one of the top things uh, I was going to play the role of listing agent, and I do run a lot of marketing for listing agents right now. One of my top challenges in my marketplace, in the Las Vegas marketplace, is when somebody's talking about price, you're talking about commission. What are we going to pay you? to get this property sold because they can go to open door Zillow and pay just slightly more or just slightly less than the typical five, 6% real estate agent commissions and have their house sold immediately. So the number one challenge that sellers have their, their number one fear is not knowing what's going to happen, not knowing if the house is going to fall out, if the people are going to be able to afford their property, how long it's going to last. So, well, no, here, to get I, that I, value. I was going <laughs> to, those are my fears. You know, I was going to role play with you. You were my listing agent, but let's, let's, so, so think of what Mark just said there. The number one fear for, let's agree to it. Let's, you know, let's cut to the chase. It's about the bot, the consumer asking the agents, you know, can you do it at a discount? What's your commission you're going to charge? And so they're getting extremely commoditized, right? So the value they're looking for, how do I create value? What's going to separate me to get that listing versus the five others if they're going in a traditional method? And so this would how it would look for, for me to Mark. Mark, one of the things I can help you with is, have you ever received a lowball offer on any of your properties? They're all coming in lowball offers right now. Okay, so look, look, so I'm gonna send you a link. So I want you to open up, we're gonna go together. And so what this is, this is called the counter offer. I want it as a lender, and, and let me pause for a second. Let's say I already went down the seller buy down and explained what the seller buy down was to Mark. So he gets it, right? So like, oh, okay, yeah, I like that. So, okay, let's see it in practice now. So now I'm up to Mark now and said, okay, I get, I get a lot of my offers. So one of the things I wanna help you, Mark, is to, I wanna be brought in. And I know you're afraid of the finance from your perspective as an agent, that's my job. So I want to be brought in and I want to help you so I can educate the buyer's agent and the buyer that are making these offers into your listing. So don't get offended with it. Let's educate them and think of from their perspective, Mark, why is this, why are they doing those to your listings? Do you understand why? The number one issue in today's market is affordability is and let me pause again for a second. Did we see the stat? Someone posted, I think, in this group, 
home prices have gone up 110%, but yet income has gone up 10% in the same timeline. There's an affordability issue. Yeah, there's inventory issue on the smaller priced homes, entry level, maybe medium price, but when you get up into the medium to higher price, not, there's not much of an inventory. Run your numbers for your cities, right? And no, there's really three levels. There's your entry and so on. So now when I'm talking to Mark and I'm explaining, I want to be brought into your counter. And Mark, here's how it looks. So this is how I'm going to teach the buyer and buyer's agents on your listing. So right now, Mark, does it property comp out at 750000 Yes or no? Yes. Okay. So days on market, so we've been a little bit of days on market. So at 750, this is what a normal consumer is looking at with their finance person, right? 750, three and three quarters, 41, 22, 85,000 85, cash to close. 10% down, good FICO score. So let's say they, but your, your listing, keep in mind guys, your listing, the Mark's listing is 800,000. Their offer was 50,000 under, and this is what they're looking at. They want that payment around that $4,100 range. And either it's personal budget or the bank they're with won't allow them to go further because of the back end ratios, right? So I come in in column two, I counter them. Let me rephrase that just so we're not mixed up. His listing is 800 and it comps at 800. Row one was the offer from the buyers and buyers agents 50,000 under. Row two was our counter back to the buyer's agent and the buyer or the buyer. If you give us 800 fair and full price where our comps are at, I'll have my lender negotiate a 13,000 seller buy down and I'll structure that correctly as a lender in the purchase contract and I'll structure, structure it correctly internally at the bank. And here's the financing I'm gonna help you with. 800, same down, or 20 10 percent down at 720. Three and three eighths on a high balance conventional total payment eight thousand or four thousand eighty five. Also used a single premium buyout of this. Look at my cash so Scott, to close. But hold on a I'm second. I'm just a real estate agent, and I'm, yeah. I'm I'm. No, I see where you're going with that. That's a great point. So so I probably might have got interrupted there, right? Like from Mark being the agent, like, whoa, 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 whoa. And I have before. Hey, Scott, this is all great and all that stuff. But that fancy math just, I, I, I can't do it. You know, I we said never, the role play. Yeah, you I know. Right? Role play, so. I, I would never I, not. So, but Mark, here's my point. Is the screen you're looking at, the video? I've, I've made those numbers. I recorded this video. Guess where that goes? So go ahead and pick your phone up and text into Counter Offer Street, and that's the video that I'm going to pre be presenting. That's the video that I'm the finance guy. I'll be going over this stuff and educating the potential buyer and the buyer's agents. Your job, I'm here to help you. Your job is to sell this property and structure it correctly. My job is to provide fin financing on the property. And so with this, going back to the second row, countering at full and fair price at 800, and we gave them 13,000 seller buy down. Look at the numbers. We're actually lower than they were at their 750 offer. And in the third row, I had to I put normal financing back in and just reduce the price by what is that 47 50 what is that $57,000 in order to equate the same amount of money. Well, think about this for a second. If we, if we get them to offer 800 and we give them 13 and your house is free and clear versus 750 free and clear, didn't I just make you $37,000? I did. Did I deliver the, the, the concern of the buyer and buyer's agents of that mobile offer because they're trying to make it affordable? I did. Did I just net $37,000 back to your seller? and you're having an issue on about commissions and earning your worth, I just solved that. 3% of 750, I just paid for everyone's commission right now, both sides of it. And not only that, if you look at the last column, that's a perfect frame to a consumer or buyer's agent 
that says, man, I'm getting a smoking deal. I'm like buying this $800,000 house for $743,000. So we have a win-win situation. This is how you use the seller buy down to help a listing agent counter any lowball offer that comes into the property so you can help them earn value back to their commission or their questions are, what's your price? Now let's pause for a second and let's now let's reframe some of this. Wouldn't this be a great way if Mark was the listing agent and he's one of three or four or five going to that appointment and he's going, have, have, have you asked the question, Mr. Seller, on any of the five before? I know you've interviewed because you've told me you're interviewing several agents. Have, have, you asked, have you asked the question to any of them about what is their strategy or plan when the first 15 days of this property has no showings? Did you ask them their plan, what their strategy is, when this property has 30 days on market with no activity? Well, I want to show you a plan how I can help you that. And, and so now what I'm doing is I'm enabling Mark to go in and completely change the conversation about what's your price. And so now he has a plan. If it gets to those points, we can roll the seller buy down out and market that property and, and think of really where the root of the problem is. It's affordability. People can't afford that. And so they're gonna, if they get an offer, then you're gonna go ahead and write that lowball offer. So I'm gonna pivot to you, Mark, the marketer, the LO, right, the banker now, is so now we've got the listing appointment, I've helped you, I've helped you answer that question. We provided not only how my lender, Scott's gonna help us counter and keep the most amount of money on our net sheet, but not only that, Scott and I are gonna help market your property. So let's show some of the people how they would market the TCA, the video, because we all agree. As a loan officer, a mortgage coach user, where my wheelhouse is, how many people can I get to see my video? How many people can I meet that I really haven't met and build that trust? So do you want to, I can show some of the uh, slides. Do you want to get into some of that a little bit? Do you want to show it? Yeah, go ahead and pull those up, Scott. Let me talk uh, from the listing agent's perspective while you pull up. I'll possibly pull up the uh, one of the signs that we use. The way that I approach a real estate agent depends on whether they're working with investors, buyers, or sellers. And the reason why I like the listing agent side is because they do have the inventory buyers look at properties the nar put out their most recent stats that 50 percent of buyers found the exact home that they purchased online first 50 percent of buyers found the house that they purchased online first yet i think 86 or 80 per eight percent of buyers still contacted a buyer's agent to help them with the negotiation part another stat that i that i love um that that's been true for a few years now is Buyers that are looking at properties are actually driving streets or in that final phase, the transactional phase. They look at 10 properties over 10 weeks and then they buy. But the first three of those 10 weeks, they did not have representation. So I stay in that, uh, that bottom tier so I can go after the buyers and help the buyers connect directly with the listing agent. So when I'm talking with a listing agent, the first thing I ask is, would you Give me your listing presentation. You know, it's February now. We're moving into a different marketplace. It's time to update our presentations based on technology, market trends. Maybe we can add some new stats. We can add some new news. But what are you using to help persuade a seller in order to use you as, as, their, uh, as their listing agent? And have you changed anything from last year? So let's, let's dust off that last year's listing presentation and walk me through it. And let's ask each other some of these hard questions as a team, and that way I can know what I'm gonna be getting when I refer any potential seller to you. So I sit down and I go over the listing agent's presentation with them and I have them give it to me. And I ask their permission but I, if I can poke holes in it or ask some hard questions. Uh, and once we go through that listing presentation, I've been able to listen 
for ways where I can jump in and provide a little bit of value on the lending side. So yes, the math helps the affordability so much. That's why I love the seller buy down, renovation, any way that we can elevate our role, our leadership role in the entire real estate process mm -hmm. helps both the buyers and the sellers. So transitioning out of me playing the role as a listing agent right now, Scott, you wanted me to play the role as the loan officer co-marketing with an agent and what we do with that. Yeah. So, so now that we've, okay. you know, so now we're, we're all finance, we're all in finance. And so we've just given you a way in different ways. And I'm going to go over some of those quickly in just a second. I'm going to open up my mortgage coach and I'll show you a couple live ones. I'll just show you how it, uh, different scenarios that came up and how I used the seller buy down differently to achieve success there. So now where we're at now is agent loves it. I need help, right? I get that question all the time. And really, yeah, my drone flyovers, me double diamond winner, you know, for 10 straight years, just does that does not cut it anymore, right? The buyer does not care. It's about, because as a seller of a property, one of the major issues is what? How much can you get me on the sale of my house? And that's the bottom line, a lot of, and that's where these, a lot of these tech firms, that's what they're relying. They're trying to commoditize us all because if they do, then they win, right? They're going to beat us at the commodity game. And this is why it was tough love with you guys opening this call. You better, you're, you work in finance and you better figure it out. You better stop over the weekend. You know, I know we're all smoking busy, which is great. Stop and educate yourself because what it looks like this summer or what it looks like next or two years, it's going to be dramatically different. And all you need is a quarter bump in rate and you're done. So pay attention to this. I'm giving this to you guys. So, and that's what I was telling. I'll set Mark up. This is our sweet spot. How do I get consumers in front of more and more of my videos, right? So go ahead, Mark. So now we're marketing the property, right? So how do we market that property? So one way to do it, as Mark was explaining, is as that consumer starts to work down that transaction or get closer to the transaction that 10 weeks, they're now circling those neighborhoods. They're now looking at the crazy neighbors, traffic flow patterns, school, you know, all that stuff. Now here's where we can get the videos in front of people. And we do a lot of this, the yard sign. So what you guys can do right now, you guys can pick up your phones. <clears throat> that number you see there, 714-477-7714. You can text Kellogg. Heck, you can text any of those on number four, Scott N, or Scott N buyer, agent, seller, reno, no, you can, whatever you want. Bottom line, what we're gonna deliver to you is we're gonna deliver content based on that keyword there. Now what I have is I've achieved my goal of delivering my mortgage coach intellectual capital to you. Not only that, I now have your information. Now I can have dialogue with you. Now I can text you back, have conversations, call you back. Now, not only am I delivering my mortgage coach experience to you as a consumer and helping my agent, I'm now helping my agent lead gen in, in, in the same breath, so to speak. Um, now let's look at examples on how that would work. Um, this is a, this hey, is Scott, a, go ahead, go ahead. But bounce back to that other screen and give everybody a second to play around with that marketing. Mm -hmm. And let's talk in a little bit more detail about that original question. If I'm the listing agent or I'll play the role as a loan officer, Mm -hmm. How do we help the real estate agent deal with the what is your price question? Like, what is their rebuttal? How do we help them eloquently answer that just like everybody else did last week with the what is your rate question? So what you helped us today show was I'm going to help you save money for the seller, meet more buyers by structuring the financing differently, help you negotiate with both a listing agent buyer's agent, buyer and seller. So as that listing agent is walking into a seller's house, they can show them an example of how we help them market this way. And then through the financing, how we're gonna save them more money. So that the price, that commission is, is fixed in the logistics of what we're doing, but just as an easier, different approach how do we help them answer that question? What is your commission? What are you charging me to list my house? 
without okay. going into mortgage coach, what, what do you think some of your agents use now that they've spoken with you? How are you coaching your listing agents to answer that question based on, on that in a quick, in a quick uh, 30 second elevator speech so, to your agent? So, so like one of the biggest issues, like what, one of the main things a seller wants is right, is to, to be able to sell their house, you know, not overinflate it, right? Just to get the listing to work away. How to sell their house and get the most out of that, right? Transaction. Um, not only that, and, and I'll, I'll, I have an int I'll give you a perfect example of, of one just recently of, of enabling the listing agent. So when he or she goes into that listing appointment, so when that question comes up, they can easily respond with, my lending partner and I can help anything that comes in. So here's our comps, and this is we're going to help market them, data marketing, staging, all that typical agent stuff. But one of the big things you have to understand, Mr. and Mrs. Home Seller, that affordability is an issue in today's market. And so what we're going to help, we're going to help potential buyers in here afford your property and afford your property at full asking listing price, not coming down and attacking, you know, and reducing the net. So this is what we're going to be really good at of, of Scott and I partnering up and dealing with the financial situation we have in today's market of affordability because we want to market the most net. Not only that, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I, now that you understand the seller buy down and how we market that, this is a great tool for your up leg purchase. So Scott has also prepared a presentation for you guys because I know what we're going to look for as we move out. We can utilize this not only to make it more affordable for you as a buyer, but we can also do it for less money if we, if we have to, you know, take and implement a larger seller buy down or whatever it may be. So, so I'm enabling the listing agent in simple scripting, right? Setting me up so I can come in and showing if it doesn't go, this is our plan B and how we market it and attract more buyers and make it more affordable buyers. Number two, I'm going to use the strategy for the seller and how I can implement for them and address their concern. Because a lot of times sellers have unrealistic price points because they need a certain amount out of the house in order to put that down payment to make it affordable. That's old school math. And if you teach them the seller buy down the up leg, now you can either re attack that up, up leg, negotiate that, reduce ratios, make it more affordable, more comfortable, or if they're only getting 15 or 16 or 10% out, then how do we utilize that to move up? Right. We've created well, an opportunity. Go ahead. Hold up right there. Let me stop you at that point. So point two was addressing the seller's concerns about their next move up. Yep. So what is a question that you are working with your listing agents on up front? And I know you do this well, which is why I'm teeing you up for this. Yep. How do you coach your listing agents to speak with their sellers up front to address the what is your price? Because what is your price from a listing agent? That's just with commission, but it also has to do with, okay, seller, what is your price? Mm -hmm. what, what is your final sales price based on these other factors? And their think, sales price, a lot of times depends on what they think they need to come in with on the next deal. So what, what is one question or two questions you have your listing agents ask the seller yep. to give you a heads up so you can come in and save the day or because, at least help the agent yep, save the yep. day? Because the listing agent knows the seller buy down, right? My agents, they know it. So they know how to address the current property if it needs it, right? Here's our plan B. If it gets to the point where there's no activity, it's priced correctly, just affordability is a major issue. They also understand the seller buy down is a major tool for to help their sellers. This is what they're pitching in their listing presentations. Not only do I have a backup plan if we need be, which no other agent pitched, and then not only that, understanding that, I actually can help you on your up leg address their major concerns. They want to move up, but they're giving you unrealistic price points to get X amount out. So teaching them not only we can use it on the up leg to eliminate pressures of affordability and or the lack of substantial capital for down payment. Because most sellers who are buyers are trying to solve that puzzle by putting large amounts down to make it more affordable for themselves. And they don't need to do that necessarily. And so they enable themselves, but also they set me up. So a lot of times they'll call me and say, Hey, I'm going to an appointment. Here's what we have. 
I need a TCA sample one for that. And also I need a move up. So when those questions, those questions come in and you will usually take it up about, you know, let's say the house is 700,000, the move up's gonna be somewhere like one, one, right? So I, we do a sample presentation so they, they can literally see and breathe and look at it. They go, ah, psh, done. So that's how I enable my LO, or, LO, or my agents that they know it, that they understand it from a buyer's perspective and help there. They also understand it from a move up when they're moving out, either addressing ratios or lack of uh, down payment from their net. So what I'm hearing is that you stay in constant communication with your real estate agents and help them navigate every pitch, yep. every listing presentation, every potential lowball offer. Yep. You spend a lot of extra time with agents. Yeah. How do you how do you how do you scale that for the people that say, well, you know, I I've got fifty agents. How can I possibly help fifty agents with all of those details? Well, the thing is too is when you get into when once you understand like the seller buy down how to you know how to basically put it together, structure it correctly, efficiently, and all the different ways to do it, you actually get to pick and choose who you get to work with, right? So now I get to pick and choose listing agents that have inventory, listing agent that has buyer teams that I can work with, that I can go up and set up shop, educate them, basic scripting and dialogue, the different ways it could work. So they understand just the 101 basics to set me up correctly. And then I literally, I tell them, guys, I want to be the middleman negotiator between your seller and that potential buyer. I want to help you if you wanted to. I wanted to help market that listing so we can double end it. You know, I want to help you, heck, just sell it. You know, and not only that, as a lender, my sweet spot helping listing agents is that seller. I'm going to attack immediately that seller and figure out what they're doing, put the custom report together, either address affordability or do it with less money down. Let me show a report on what that looks like, right? Let me show you a move up one. Um, here's one, um, and you guys, um, let me show you something I have, oh, I'll tell you in a second. So I'll give you these and I'll tell you a number to text in and then give them the link to it. So here's a move up presentation. So the first goal is simple. This is their goal. This is their client's goal. This is the seller. We're going to buy a 2.5, but we need, we need Mark to sell our property and basically get out 263,000 to make it happen. And disregard the, the loans, it, it works in every single market. It's all relative. The percentages are basically the same. So in this particular case, their goal was to move up and their payment, they need to keep their payment around the 60, low 6,000s, and their cash to close is 263. Mark gives, Mark, the agent, gives his normal presentation, goes, guys, we're only going to probably net out of here 140,000. So what happens is when they run that math, they may not even list yet. But when they run that math, normal math, and they're putting a smaller down payment, look what skyrockets here. They're doing a jumbo, right? 10%, lender paid MI, four and a half. Look at that payment now. Ay, yeah, yeah, killed the deal. We're done. But not so fast. Hold on a second. Look at the third row. Let's go get that million two fifty. Let's negotiate a 28,000 seller buy down. Let's take the rate to three and three. This is a jumbo 10. And look where my payment went. 63.75. I'm right next to that massive down payment one, but look at my cash to close, 138,000. You can do this, think of this presentation. This is a must presentation. You guys have to build for multiple reasons. Number one, you need to be teaching the move up to your agents. Number two, this is a great presentation to financial planners. So imagine going back to the financial planner and saying, hey, you have clients coming back to you want to liquidate assets in order to get into real estate, right? Their 401k or whatever. I'm going to teach you the seller buy down so we can do column three. One, we can achieve affordability and we can do it for a lot less cash needed. There's a great one right there for your financial planners. Now the financial planners are like, holy cow, you know, 
So my lender, who I'm going to refer to, you can do a move up analysis and I'm not going to liquidate all your retirement accounts to get it done. This is a great one for your listing agents. They can go on a listing appointment going, you're only going to net X amount out of here, but I can keep the dream alive of that move up. And here's how Scott and I are going to do that. So there's a perfect presentation you need to build. Let me give you one more and I'm going to give you, here is one. You've seen that one already. Um, it's got, while you look for that one, let me comment really fast because we have about yep. eight minutes left. Yep. So affordability is the buyer's concern. Yep. And certainty is the seller's concern. Right. Price versus payment are the two words that they are battling with. And we're trying to show them value and service. On our right. side. So being as a lender on the inside, on both, on both ways, we can address both of those. We can address both of those better than the buyer's agent or the listing agent can, yep. which is why I like to work with real estate agents who understand the value that we help them in the negotiation process. To the questions that uh, I was asking you to, to come up with, I know you ask your, your listing agents too, is uh, what is most important to you, seller, in your next move up, down payment, or payment or lower price. We pretty much know the answer is an affordability and in payment. Buyers care about payment, sellers care about price. Now, when we take that seller and we start having them think in terms of the buyer now, because now they're looking at their next property, they're, they're thinking payment. We show them the seller buy down strategy and how they can still achieve that same lower payment with less down. It helps them connect with the buyers who are coming in to purchase their house much better. Now they both have something in common and they're not put at odds against each other. So I always have those listing agents have these conversations with their seller. Once they have those questions, which is, what do you care most about? Do you need this? They start asking those questions differently. It helps us frame this up. And now that seller has become a marketing partner with us. They're, they feel like they're more in control of, how we're going to help them get the most for their property and still help those, those buyers that are coming in. That's exactly yeah, right. probably Scott three final points on, on yep. this slide. So here, here is, let me do, this is the one, this is a perfect one. Just one we're in escrow right now. Agent turned to me, um, got a buyer. This is the one I've already spoken about. I got a buyer at B of A. I don't like him to go through there. It's a nightmare. Um, you know, what can you give him a second opinion? Sure. So I sat down with him. One of the biggest, one, he's a reverse mortgage uh, profession and his wife's an attorney. So one of their major concerns, because his background was he needs to pivot out of the FHA loan soon, right? Because he understands the MI and the cost. And, and one of the big reasons why they're even taking this in the first place is income is great, credit's, credit's good, but just really a small, down, super small down payment. I can't do, I can't do the 3% of this high balance, for example. So we're structuring an FHA for right now. So the, the first column was what B of A was giving them, right? Oh, well, we won't say their name. What the big box bank was giving them, right? Said, you know, da, 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 pretty simple. And they were done. Files already there. I got the paperwork in, done. Like, okay, we'll talk to Scott, Steve. And he goes, and so now I put mine together. And I have this in recorded video, which I'll give you guys that you can study. I put mine together at 750. Sure, I beat him by an eighth. But remember their concern, because the questions I asked was, how do I pivot out of, the, out of the FHA sooner than later? So I made a phone call, where's our value, 750? Do I, can I get 7,000 and sell or buy down? Absolutely. So we offered 750, got 7,000 and sell or buy down. I took the rate to three and an eighth. I saved them $251 compared to the B of A one they were already in or going with. I reinvested that. So if you look at, and I reduced the principal pay down to three years, look at the spread. I am helping them build because I'm paying less interest on this FHA loan. And this is a flat, there's no appreciation, no market house appreciation here. This is straight paying less interest, more principal. So I can get them to five to eight to 10% and pivot out of this loan as soon versus doing a B of A way. So, I won the deal. So immediately went to application, brought them all in, got the offer accepted, open escrow, we'll fund March, wherever, it March 8th. So this is something to where I know. So think about relative what we're talking about. I now enabled Steve as the buyer's agent. I just made him a hero here. 
He referred me in, wanted that second opinion. I listened to their needs, structured it, and away we went. So let me do this for you guys because I can't give everything to you guys right now. Look at this number. Seven, or maybe type it out. Robert, can you type this number out? 714-477-7425, and I'll put it there. And I want three, you can have three different things. You can have no PMI, you can have Scott, sell or buy down, and I'll, I'll post this in there. So I'm gonna give you all the links and everything. Now, one of the things too, and, and I'll pause for a second, kind of summarize, and we got five minutes, um, um, and summarize where we're, what we've done. We've taken and pivoted from what's your rate in our space as lenders, phenomenal, uh, webinar last week. Keep watching it. I personally use, I understand markets. I watch Dan Rawich a lot and I use Rate Watch a ton. Everyone gets that. So be your practitioner in that space. Now, Mark and I wanted to te take that same, but now take that, not rate, but turn it to price relative to an agent. And then how do you guys help your agents deal with that question they're going to get? Not only today, but as we start to move forward, it's gonna get worse, right? So this is what this was about. And one of the major things that we showed you here was actually the seller buy down and how I use it in different ways, not only to do simple understanding, just I need them to understand a little bit. Don't understand as what we can as bankers and, and lenders do, they need them to stand a little, uh, understand a little bit so they can set us up into those conversations so we can deliver and help them answer those questions. And not only that, we've showed you briefly how to market those properties too with it. So taking those mortgage coach presentations and delivering them to the masses, that's my sweet spot. I wanna get to Jeremy's 5,000 TCAs because notice Dave kept spotlighting the TCAs. If you notice their TCAs, Every single one of them was thousands. They're in the thousands. They're in the 1,200, 1,000, 5,000. Get your TCAs going. That's your sweet spot for these people. Mark, you all right? I love that. I was thinking about your TCAs. You're probably at 2,500, though, aren't you? Yeah, I, I, well, yeah. I'm at, no, I'm at like 16 or 1,700. I know when oh, okay. I first, there was a glitch or something happened, I had to get into a new one. But shoot, you can even go back to the old school. I was using the old school disc and all that stuff. But either way, it doesn't matter. Well, here are my three takeaways. Yep. Find what you love and reframe whatever questions scare you so you can deliver your answers based on what it is that you truly love. What mm -hmm. you do, Scott, you love that math and you're fantastic at the TCA. And I, I would do a three hour just infomercial for the mortgage coach product and the TCA and the community. It's, it's in every bit of marketing that we do. But I love the technology and how we present those options to a buyer, yeah. a real estate agent and a seller. And that video is so critical. My yeah. second takeaway is ask different questions mm -hmm. and ask questions differently. But to more asking and more listening before we come up with the answers and encourage our real estate agents to ask different questions to their sellers. From last week's, what is your rate? Everybody started out with, I need to ask you more questions. On the listing side, what is my price? You know, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, that's like the third most important question most sellers ask me. Yep. Uh, out of 10, we're gonna go through all of those, but I wanna ask you some other, uh, you tell me all of the things that are most important. So obviously price, commission, what else is most important to you? And they go back and they hear, what do you mean? Price is the third? Right. Most important question sellers ask you. Yep. Yeah, we're going to go over all 10 of those questions, but I want to hear what it is from you first. And you know, there's 10 questions in there that the seller should be asking. So you're going to help them ask those better questions, right. either on the mortgage or the real estate side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, yeah, and I, yeah, I mean, you got, I just, I, I threw it down on you guys. You guys got to know this stuff. I mean, you know, if it's too complicated that I'm frankly, that's just a piss poor, you know, that, that's just whining. That's piss poor because you're a finance person. I don't care if you're new in the industry, go study, 
when you can't do something in your house to fix something that's broken, what do you do? You go to YouTube. You YouTube how to fix a pipe, right? Go to YouTube in the Mortgage Coach Group and, and Google and go find Seller Buy Down. Go find, there's a bunch of people talking about it. Go learn it, you know? So you have to because you're gonna continually get pushed to be commoditized. And don't, don't give me the excuses, rates are great. I've, I'm gonna post in this group, I'm gonna give you a number and I got all my presentations on it. You can text into it and you, I'll get you all of the custom ones I have that I'm doing for my clients. I'll show you, I, we don't have enough time. Maybe we do another one uh, on this topic, but I encourage you to keep taking this with rate, keep now take it to your referral partners. You can really build your purchase business this way and, and good luck. Let us know if you have any questions and we'll call it a wrap, Robert. You got it. Hopefully I didn't crash the car. Dave's will be fine. We'll clean up our trash or in and out, all that stuff, and give the car back to Mortgage Coach. Sounds good. This, this call is a wrap. Okay. Okay, everybody. But thanks, thanks, Mark, for jumping on. Thank you, guys.